All right, guys, enough noodling around. This is Eric here of Guitarsonal. Welcome back. And uh, a little bit of old meets new. Maybe you, you caught some nuances in there that maybe they belonged, maybe they didn't, maybe they sounded bad, but nonetheless, they were from the, uh, the halls of rock and roll. And perhaps, maybe, maybe the rock and roll gods have graced me enough to let me share some sounds with you out of this uh, Dan Electro double cut here. This is a 1960 uh, Dan Electro double cut, two pickup model, and uh, what a killer, killer, killer guitar. Uh, we wanted to share it with you a little bit today and kind of show it off a bit. Uh, this particular one I got from the guys over at Atlanta Discount Music, and uh, they were very helpful in making sure that I could, uh, of course, you know, not walk into place and not leave without getting a dang guitar. So this one uh, happened to follow me home. This is an original 1960 Dan Electro. Uh, a lot of the modern Dan Electros are wonderful, and uh, they're priced very reasonable. And the thing that people, I think, sort of tend to forget about these guitars is they were always intended to be an inexpensive, entry-level type guitar that could sell at Sears for not a lot of money. And then, you know, obviously, musicians like Jimmy Page uh, have made this particular type of guitar, and the lipstick pickups, uh, which actually use lipstick cases, uh, very, very popular. Uh, through various rock music and things like that over the years. Uh, we were getting into some uh, Led Zeppelin territory, hopefully, and a little bit of Tool territory for those of you that were listening. Maybe I didn't butcher it too bad. I am in Dadgad tuning. So uh, I did get down into Dadgad in order to get my Zeppelin on there, which, you know, Cashmere's played in Dadgad. Uh, we'll get back in standard tuning and go over some of the sounds, but these were very, very inexpensive guitars in their day. They were meant to be kind of cheap and something they could sell at, like, you know, like I said, Sears and the other large stores. Um, but they're definitely reasonably good quality. It is sort of like a just, you know, kind of a particle board construction. It's not a very uh, expensive guitar. It's just a couple of pieces of literally like plywood, cheap plywood just laminated together and then they put this binding around it uses a simple bolt-on neck type mechanism, real simple, with a couple of bolts. And the bolts in the back of the guitar adjust the pickup height. And then you have a control cavity cover right here on the back. Uh, you can see the paint has worn off of this guitar really nice from years of playing uh, before I became to be the uh, owner. It is a double cut. These guitars were produced in a wide variety of different uh, finish options. Well, I say a wide variety, but I think they offered a few different finish options and they offered some different pickup configurations. They had a single cut version, a double cut version, single pickup version, three pickup version. Uh, you have a basic tone and volume control and a pickup selector. Now, Jimmy Pages, uh, I believe they call this guitar the DC-2. Okay, double cut away, two pickups, DC-2. Uh, Jimmy Pages, Dan Electro, has the what they call the bat wing pick guard on it. This just has the simplified pick guard. Uh, so it's not exactly the same as Jimmy Page's guitar, but the tones are definitely there. And I'm running through a 1974 Fender Princeton reverb, and we've got it on about seven, so we're getting some drive going and uh, getting a little bit of front end of the amp pushing. The pickups on these guitars are not very high wound pickups at all. Um, they're not uh, exactly super high output, but they have a jangly characteristic to them, uh, which let me get back into uh, just standard amp here. We'll get on the neck pickup and we'll go over a few of the sounds here. All right, and the, the pickup selector on this particular guitar is a little bit wonky. I think it's gonna have to be have some cleaning done on it, but here's the neck pickup. Selection, which is both pickups. Bridge pickup. All right, I'm gonna pop. 
pause for a second and get into standard tuning. All right, back up in standard now. We'll go over a couple of sounds. Uh, a couple of other characteristics of this guitar. Some of these guitars had uh, six in a line uh, tuners on them. This one has, you know, obviously three on the side uh, tuners with a little bit more desirable type of headstock that you would find on these. Also, there is a, there is a reinforced metal pair of metal rods in the neck of this guitar, but there is no truss rod. So the only thing about these guitars you got to watch out for is make sure the necks aren't crooked because there's no truss rod adjustment. And remember, this was kind of an inexpensive guitar. Um, and also, your intonation is not really adjustable either. There's literally a chunk of Brazilian rosewood. And to make the strings higher, you shove it up in there a little bit uh, further. <laughs> to get them to sit lower, you pull it out a little bit further and they sit lower. And that's it. There's really not a lot of adjustment with this bridge. Um, but that's pretty much the guitar in a nutshell. I'm going to go over a couple of, uh, let's just push some pedals into it and have a little bit of fun. And, uh, you know, we're getting some kind of jangly sounds. Let me clear out my loop from earlier here. Let's see. It's a very jangly sounding sort of guitar uh, that can really get some, some interesting stuff going on. So that's a little loop there just showing how jankly and uh, jangly and spanky the pickup sound. Um, I'll get back on the treble pickup and we'll go over just some sort of rhythmy sounds with that. And of course, I'm incredibly out of tune here. 
Uh, one thing I will say, you know, these guitars, while I'm tuning here, I'll just mention that these instruments, if you're wanting a style of instrument like this, one of these double cuts like the old school Dan Electros, you know, there are some modern guitars out there, obviously the modern Dan Electros they're making now, and everything like that, that probably hold up a, a little bit better than some of the vintage pieces. Uh, these guitars are aging a bit. This is a 1960, so it's getting on, what, 70... Wow, is it what? <laughs> 50, 58 years old, right? Something like that. So they're getting on a little bit older instrument. And uh, age sometimes doesn't fare too well with these particular instruments just because of their construction style. And sometimes they tend to not hold in tune quite as well when you're doing a lot of bending. But they are a cool piece that, that you know, can belong in a collection and that will fit along really well uh, in a guitar collection if that's something you want to do. Or as a recording option, you can get some really different kind of sounds, more jangly sort of sounds out of these pickups than you might get out of a Tele or a Strat or Les Paul or something. So it gives you some options to uh, get some different sounds, okay? Very nice sounding guitar. That gives you a bit of an idea of the kind of tones uh, that you can get out of the guitar. Very jangly, kind of bright and spanky, uh, really nails that sort of sound really well. Uh, these guitars are desirable, they're really cool, uh, people tend to kind of like them. Uh, you know, they're unique, they're different, and it's something you really don't see every day. They're not encountered in the wild terribly often, although I will say, uh, they, they can be had. It's not like they're impossible to get, they're out there. And uh, man, they sure did make a heck of a lot of these guitars. Remember, these things were uh, intended to be mass-produced, 
not expensive. You know, when they originally made these guitars, they probably never even thought people would hold on to them, that they would last, that they would even work. I mean, it was, you have to think that it was really a, a venture in saving money, making money. Like they, they were not concerned about the longevity of these guitars. And I think that they, they really didn't even think that they would stand the test of time in the way that they have. And, uh, they're kind of cool and unique for that, uh, for that reason. So guys, thanks for tuning in today's video. I hope you enjoyed what you heard and, and seeing this little guitar and checking it out. It's a 1960 Dan Electro double cut. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Have yourselves a great day. And uh, we'll see you next time. Remember, we post every Monday and every Friday here on Guitar Arsenal. Make sure you're tuning in for our videos. Uh, we, we like putting these together. We like making uh, the viewers happy. And let me know if there's a certain guitar you want to see or whatever. We'll uh, try to show it off. Thanks for tuning in today. You guys have a great day. I'm going to make a little more racket and we'll let you go here. Mm -hmm.